live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. A warm welcome to all our viewers. We're currently looking at a wild dog that is running around in the grass in front of us. You can see it just gotten up now. Um, and the rest of the pack is just lying off to the right of where this wild dog is. But I'd like to encourage all our viewers, come and jump on this live safari here in the African bush. this wild dog blends into that um, bit of grass that it's lying down in. It's very hard to see the colors, but you can see those big ears as it's listening out, probably um, scanning the area to see if there's any potential meal. Because there's quite a few wild dogs that are lying down here. Um, some off just to the right under the tree. It's, today is a nice overcast day. And there's a good chance as it starts to cool down a little bit later that these wild dogs would start moving. Um, and from where they were last seen, they basically started moving um, into the wind. Now, I'm Nikki. I'm going to be your ranger for this afternoon. And on camera, we have Gert. Now, just to, to tell you a bit more of our plan for this afternoon. So basically, just to give you an idea. So we started up in this area here and we moved all the way to round about here and this is where we found these wild dogs so the chances are the wind so this is east this is west south and north the wind is coming in from the east blowing um, south and west so all the way down here so the chances are these wild dogs will probably start moving up in this, this direction right over here um, but this is where we are currently situated on the reserve and what's quite nice about it is this particular um, pack that we're looking at at the moment has 10 youngsters with them so the chances are they have to constantly move in order to feed all the mouths that are here. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a stunning afternoon here at Tualu Kalahari. Still a little bit cool but it's actually quite nice to have a bit of cool weather just before the summer starts. Um, just got, by the way, guys, my name is Moritz. Behind the camera, as always, we've got Glenn. And yeah, beautiful way to start the afternoon. I mean, it's just stunning. We came out over this dune and all of a sudden, poof, lions. And I mean, no, no guide will complain about a drive starting like that. So just beautiful. These are the three Southern Pride sub-adults that has recently been kicked out since the the females had new cubs now so very very cool um, you can see they even though it is sort of still midday they are very interested in something behind us and we had a look there's a couple of Gemsbok oryx that's standing on top of the dune now with these guys they with them getting kicked out not too long ago they are going to be hungry more often than normal lions just because now all of a sudden they have to fend for themselves and they don't know how to do that yet. You know how teenagers are. Um, so not as great as hunting, at hunting as they would like to be, especially with it being the two boys and then the very young female. Um, they don't have the moms anymore to provide for them. So a little bit of a crash course on life at the moment. However, they are looking beautiful and healthy. Maybe a little thin here and there, but it doesn't look like they're struggling to stay alive. We do still see them when they are in the area and the, the adults or the pride has, their natal pride has made a kill. We do still see them joining on the kill um, here and there. So it's not like they have been ousted completely. So they do get a bit of snacks here and there from mom still however we're going to stick with them and see if they don't want to if they don't want to maybe start stalking
Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to the Maasai Mara. We have lions, teenage lions from the Ololo Pride here. My name is Tim, and behind camera we have Big James. Please ask us questions, and we'll be ready to answer to you. These lions here have been sleeping the entire morning, and right now it's where they were sleeping. It was a little bit cool so they've come here for warmth but again i think in those sheds there is some little warmth so they're going to stay here lena thank you so much for, for your question how how strong is a lion's bite a lion bite is, is super strong i can't really put it into kilos but I can tell you from from the hippo and the crocodile the, I think if the lion falls in third out here in in this savanna where we are but super strong this this pride here was almost displaced this morning by a pride male that came from a different area called Splitnos so split noses around the area. So I think I'm suspecting that all these lions and teenagers that are ganging up here will want, or today, one time, or maybe even tomorrow, try and kick that male out. Because they're all sleeping right now, they're going to spend a little time with them, see what they will do. Maybe if they wake up and go find that male, kick him out, or maybe go carry on with their daily activity. Jumbo Jumbo and hello, hello. Welcome to another corner of the Masimara. And I think today is the day of lions from South Africa to East Africa. And from team and to me and the lions I got here, this is the River Pride. And just like Tim's cut, mine are also very flat. Look at them. And the difference could be mine got some kill. And this is a kill they had, they have been having from yesterday morning when they brought down that zebra. Very good afternoon, everybody. My name is David. And with me on camera this afternoon is Bungay. Hi, Bungay. Jumbo. Look at that. Helen, how are you? And you have uh, sent me the first question before even I requested for questions and comments. You're asking how often do these lions hunt? Now, before this kill Harmon here, the last kill they had was about a week and they had brought down a huge male buffalo that was brought down by three females of this pride that has four females in them. Now, for about a week, they stayed without a kill, but sometimes in between, we usually guess they'll always catch small things for themselves, maybe a little bird or a small little antelope. But after that one week, the next big kill to them was this zebra that you're seeing here. But that again, I'll tell you, it always changes or it varies from one lion pride to another. Currently, I got two females here and one of the females got four cubs. Tamara, good question. You're know, asking how big is this uh, lion's territory? I would give it about 40 square kilometers. It's one of the, the second largest territories we got here in the Mara Triangle. And 40 square kilometers, four, four lionesses, four cubs is pretty good size. And tomorrow, what should happen once in a while, we'll get the boys or the coalition of males coming in and joining uh, these uh, lionesses here. Now, I got a bird of prey out there. Do you see that? Ladies and gentlemen, remember, we are coming to you live. This is a live and interactive safari.
welcome to the other side of the Mara. And because Gigi was discussing about the river pride, we have the Ololo pride. These are only teenagers that are spending the time here. So their territory is not far from here. So the boundary is just a little bit closer from where we are. We have about 50, more than 50 lion prides in the Mara, including where we are, we are in the Mara Conservancy, the Mara River bisects the Maasai Mara Game Reserve, and then we have to the north, we have the conservancies. Now, all together, we have about more than 50 prides. Secondly, we have breakaways. So we have lots of breakaways because sometimes lions come in and clash with the pride males and kick them out. Sometimes, because the prides are big, these lionesses decide to carry on with the previous male. So that's how prides break away. Now the Ololo pride, the pride is big and we have a big pride territory. These lions have been sleeping around here for quite a while and I'm hoping they will wake up soon and carry on their lion activity. It is always nice when you see lions active. Can you imagine these lions sleeping here? Can be killer machines. They've taken down buffaloes, hippos, name them. But they are here, just lazily sleeping. So when these lions are sleeping around there, look at where they are. You can hardly see them. They blend in very well, and yet they're the apex predator, so they don't fear anything at all around here. The only thing that they can be worried of is buffaloes, or maybe other lions from another pride. This teenage year will be ousted, unfortunately, not far from now. I think it will be maybe four or five months because they're growing old. It's time for their father to kick them out, to go and fend from their, for their own territory and to, to father out other lions. A very difficult time for lions, but that is how it happens because if these males are allowed to, to remain in this pride, it will inhabit what we call inbreeding. Still gonna wait here and see what these lands are up to. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome aboard from the Greater Kruger National Area. Western Fringes, we're on the Sabi Sands, everyone, and Juma Game Reserve. And we're just looking out into that area because there's a possibility that there is a carcass nearby. Now, this morning when I was out, I saw the signs of possibly a predator around. My name is Trishal and I've got BK on camera this afternoon before I forget. It's a bit warm, it's about 25 degrees Celsius, 75, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, but nice and overcast. So we're looking out here and as you can see, the grass is quite brown. So it'll be difficult to see any predators that are lying down. But hopefully because of the overcast weather, they'd be moving should be awesome. So this morning I saw a hyena with a little piece of flesh. I saw two vultures and a tawny eagle. So that means that something happened very quickly in this area. So I want to keep a good eye out. Now remember, this is your safari, so use that hashtag wild earth chat to us. Send us your questions and give us your comments. I'm going to be off and search for this predator. Sorry about that, guys. But you know, being out here in the bush comes with its difficulties. But at least you still have me. So what we're going to do... So my, I suspect that I'm either looking for the lone lion nest that's in the west. I'm on Impala Plains Road near the junction of Sandy Patch via Teller Access. 
And this lone lioness and her cub have been seen in this area. So it could be her or it could be a leopard that has made that kill from the morning. I don't think Hart the hyena had made that kill because she just had a piece of fur. And if she had made that kill and it was very fresh, still wet, if she had made it, then she would be at the animal. And then she heard something, she lifted up her head and she ran for her life, all of 30 meters. Then she realized whatever it was is not actually coming for her or she might have misheard. And then she went back, grabbed her meal and moved on. A mystery, mystery. But that's what I love about the bush. I hope Trishala managed to find some of the predators that she is looking out for. But have a look. We After the wild dogs, we came to this particular water hole to come have a look at elephants. Um, and they are all drinking. But on top of it all, um, talking about colder weather and predators, have a look at what is right in front of us. So this is now a completely different area to where we were just now with the wild dogs. And you'll see just on this side of the water hole, there's some more predators so there's some more african wild dogs but this is a different pack so it's not the same one that we just saw now it's a completely different pack um to the one just now and you can see how they've maneuvered themselves around the water hole, probably hoping for some impala or, or maybe a, a small water buck which is something smallish coming past to drink water and they'll be around in the area but just going back to where these um elephants are after these wild dogs. So I wonder what's gonna happen once the elephants get closer to where those wild dogs are. Are they gonna chase them? Especially with elephants, they don't they don't particularly like any predator. Even though wild dogs won't really be able to um, go for something like an elephant calf, the chances are just like if elephants see those wild dogs, they'll probably just try and chase them. Theo, it's a very good question, age five. So, like, it all depends on the elephant. So let's work on the elephants that we can see right in the middle of the screen. Now, do you see the one that's the furthest in front, that little one there? So I think, personally, by judging the size of his head, the size of his body, and his legs, he'll probably be one and a half tons. Now, the one right next to him, look at how much bigger that one is. If you look at the tusks, the head, and the overall body, so that one will probably be around maybe three times the size of that youngster. So that one might even be four and a half tons. Um, but a big bull, so one of the old, or the, one of the heaviest elephant bulls that had ever been recorded, um, was nearly 11 tons. Um, so it just shows you that elephants can weigh anywhere from probably over 100 kilo, uh, kilograms all the way up to nearly 11 tons. can see there's um in the back there's a tree right next to the water's edge and it looks like this elephant has an itch near the ear and it's actually scratching the ears Lona I'm not too sure with that question I'll, de I'll definitely have to go and, and have a look on, on why they won't bark like domestic dogs but they they have something very similar but it's like a, a hooting sound like a and once they make that sound the others will respond but of course whenever there's a kill there's a lot of excitement so it's these low shrieks that you can hear um however i'm not too sure of 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 why they don't have that capability i'll have to go and read up and hopefully on our next episode i'll be able to share that with everyone But an absolutely incredible scene. What I just might do from here is just go and reposition a bit to see these wild dogs and these elephants. It looks like some of the elephants actually smelt the wild dogs because they have their trunks up in the air. Elephants have a high sense of smell. 
and it's always nice when you watch them strolling and picking up their trunks up. Back to our lions, they're still sleeping. But soon after, they will be all waking up. Because when it gets cold, they'll always leave that place to go with their, carry on with their daily activities. So these lions, like I told you earlier, they have teenage lions here from the Lola Pride. We have about three boys who seems to be almost getting to three or maybe three and above. They'll all leave this pride, but the mom is still walking around. Reese, thank you so much for your question. How many cubs do lions give annually? So lions come into East Africa every two years if they are successful to, to raise their cubs. So a litter consists of three cubs. So the bigger the pride, the more the success. So if the pride is small and another male come and conquers that pride, the lion, the, the lion cubs will be killed. And that will trigger the mom to come back into Istras after about three to four weeks. So lions come into give birth after every two years. As you wait for these lions to wake up, we're going to send you to another safari vehicle. That's very correct, Tim. Every two years, a uh, lioness uh, will have a litter. And once in a while, you know, I love uh, to send some quizzes or some questions to you. And I have one for you this afternoon. I'm sure the last time you were with me, you saw that raft there on top of that tree or in, in that tree. Just look at her carefully and you tell me who do you think that is. Look at him carefully. Tell me who do you think that is. Of course, it's a bachelor ego, but I want you to tell me, is it a male or a female? Hashtag World Earth on Twitter at FC in the comment section of the YouTube chat channels. I'll be happy to get your answers. It's a raptor, it's a bird of prey, and it's a bachelor eagle. So my question for you, is it a male or is it a female? Now, I have remained the same position I was before. And out of my experience, I have found these eagles coming very close to kills. Remember, we are coming to you live. This is a live and interactive safari. So, alrighty guys, we have decided to just go and check um, the major water holes. Those lions are looking a little flat that we saw earlier. So, we just wanted to come and check the water holes, see if we don't perhaps find some of the other pride members. You know, maybe the southern pride with the cubs or that large southern pride female that has yet to show us her cubbies. Just to allow for a little bit of time to pass for those oryx to come closer for it to get a little bit cooler and for those lions to start looking a little bit more in a hunting vibe you know so we are busy just checking all the water holes checking for tracks um, of other lions possibly i saw a, a beautiful male lion track there at the back coming out of the water hole going in this direction so we're gonna go and check on another water hole and see if there's maybe something happening and then slowly make our way back to, to where we left that, those two um, males and one female sub-adult lions and see if they don't wanna provide us with a little bit of hunting action this afternoon. Like I said, those oryx and there was some springbok as well um, are really moving into the right direction. So hopefully, hopefully they'll come close enough for those lions to start showing some interest um, it would be interesting to see how they go about you know going for these lions because so Fiona just had a question how many water holes do we have at Swallow Fiona 
Um, I haven't actually counted them. The, <laughs> the reserve is so big. Um, but let's say if I had to say probably about 10 or so over the entire reserve. So not a lot, just because there's, um, you know, there's not the need for more than that. This is the Kalahari. This is the Kalahari, so um, it's not supposed to have a lot of water. Um, so yeah, I'd say about maybe 10, maybe 12 or something like that. I am in the Masemar of Kenya, and now I got a beautiful herd of elephants. And as I had told you before, please do send us questions or comments because your questions, we are going to answer them in real time. And you can do that using hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter or at FC in the comment section of the YouTube chat channels. Now, the Masai Mara may not have as many water holes or watering points, but we got so many sources of water. I'm talking of springs, we got so many wells, and we got so many marshes. But above all, we got the Mara River. I've remained the same position where we were watching the raptor, the bachelor wagon in the tree, and the lions with the carcass, not very far from there. And just turning to the right, I saw this head of elephants coming very close to where I am. Now, there's a small lager there. Lager is kind of a drainage. And when it rains, they'll always collect water. And I've got a feeling that either those elephants are disappearing that lager for quick drink or maybe a mud bath. Look at that small little calf there. I think maybe just too tiny to be feeding very well on anything solid. She's just discovering herself. And the biggest tool of interest or curiosity is their trunk. That's the first part of their body they usually need to understand very well because it means so much to them. Smelling, sniffing, breathing, picking stuff from the ground. Kathy, because you're asking, why are elephants more smarter than all the other animals in the world? Interesting question. I don't know which answer exactly to give you, but I would think it's maybe because of evolution. I have no specific answer. I'm looking uh, at primates also. I'm looking at uh, gorillas. I'm looking at chimpanzees. I'm looking at bonobos. I mean, which are equally smart and having a very high uh, DNA. But when we are out here in the African wilderness, and more so here in the Masai Mara, where we don't see uh, the bonobos and the other uh, big apes, elephants still remain up there because of the things they do, uh, digging water for the other animals, when they disturb the ground and baying key species. Now, I am going to remain right here because it seems these elephants are heading towards the direction of the pride of lions that I have that are having a nap with the kill. And I will let you know later what happens as we take you to another location. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve in Sabisens in Lower Feld, where today temperature is 25 degrees 77 Fahrenheit and I'm Andrew on camera this afternoon and Neil we're standing right here with such a beautiful tallest animals on earth which is giraffe right here what a privilege so they giraffe kind of move around sometimes alone and maybe sometimes in the group that depend on how many of them in the group then right now we're looking at this single male giraffe and you can see how dark it is. Sometimes they depend, depend on gene pool on this animal. Sometimes the older they get and that's the darkest they get. 
could be also gene pool from the mother or father was a dark or she was dark. But this particular giraffe, you know, he's watching in the one direction always. I know we just come from that direction with nothing. Well, they have incredible eyesight. Whatever he spot, maybe we just miss. And this is what they do. They always stare at one direction if there is something they're not too sure about. So it's kind of reversed slightly. But just probably, you know, going after this new shoot of the leaves that the shoots already in this tree. And there are browser animals in this part of the area, southern giraffe the species. And then looking at the massive tallest giraffe like that, you would be around at least five, five and a half meters to six meter tall, possibly. The male. Alan, good afternoon. Welcome to your show uh, this afternoon. Yes, there's a very good question. That giraffe, they are, they have their favorite diet, which is most thorn trees. And those are cages. And of course, they would go for a lot of toxic trees, such as a out here, tamoti trees, one of the toxics. And these trees occurred along, along the drainage line systems. And as long as there's a plenty of them there, that's where they go. Sometimes spend a lot of time in those trees. It's only toxic for most other animals and humans sometimes, but not for them. But you know, they, they are cool animal that sometimes they don't, when there's no such a trees like this, they can go for any of the plants that is available as long as it's a trees. Of course, they're browsers. They only afford to reach the topest trees for their diet. They can see, I mean, taking grass, but not quite often. You know, they mainly stand. And they always you know, prefer to chew card standing or lying down. What I'll do, I'll link you to another station and they carry on. Do you search for more animals? So have a look at what these elephants are doing. One just got a fright and the other started running off to the left. Now they're probably going to turn around and see what was all the commotion about. It looks like the herd has just moved in the back. Now I wonder, they are moving away from the water's edge and at the back there is a little canal that goes or there's a little stretch of water that normally goes to the back there. And I wonder maybe because the water is drying up that there's a lot of mud. So they might just be there just to get a bit of that mud and flick it onto themselves. I can actually see the one in the middle is now doing that. You might find that some of the babies could actually go and roll down in this. If it was a very warm day, you might have even, um, you could find it where these elephants will then basically go into the water to swim. But for now, it's just so nice to cool themselves down. Matthew, with the elephant skin, it depends on where we take, we look at the, the skin from that elephant. Um, in some spaces or places, especially around the head, it could be more than uh, almost close to two centimeters thick uh, and then also um, around the back but it, it is pretty thick skin um, probably one of the animals with the thickest skins um, especially land animals and um, that you can find it's between them hippos and even giraffe have some uh, portions of the skin that are also quite thick Look at the little one that's off to the right now, making his way closer. You can see the, the mud just splashing in the water at the back. Mosnene, with elephants in particular, I have never, or I don't know too much about elephants, if they're capable of um, actually swimming or even floating. I'm not too sure. I've 
to be honest, with my gunning career, I've never been able to see a water hole deep enough um, to be able to see that. However, what I do know is that in this particular water hole, the elephants will move, walk through the water, and they keep their trunks above. Even the babies, whenever they... Um, Whenever the water is too deep, they'll just keep their trunks up in the air and then basically walk until they eventually get to the other side. Might even grab onto mom's tail. Now, the wild dogs that we saw earlier um, has just gone and moved into a bit more of an open area. So there was a few of them that were um, hiding away under the bush just to get out of the sun because early on the sun was shining and then it started becoming overcast again. But uh, they've just stood up now. From the other herd of elephants, we're coming here to another herd. Look at them all running away from the big bull. There's a lot of confusion that has, that has come in here. They're running away from the big bull. So big bulls are always by themselves and they form what we call battle herds. So this herd here has come into a confusion. There's an activity that I think they're chasing away that younger one not quite sure why they're chasing it, but the, as soon as the big bull joined this herd, they all raised up their heads, their trunk curled in, and started running away from him. So bulls will walk from herds to herds, and when they come into females in estrus, they will mate with them. Normally, bulls don't associate themselves with the herds. The herds only have females and and youngsters that walk around with them. So Big James is gonna pan slightly to the left where you'll see the big bull and the rest of the herds. See how that interaction, as soon as he joins in there, they all have to be submissive. Big bulls demand respect. See the communication that went in, just all of them just stopped. Look at them. Elephants are so social and they have personalities like us humans. Edna, thank you so much for your question. When do you tell an elephant when an elephant is agitated? When an elephant is agitated, you, you see head shakes, trumpeting, head raised up, trunk curled in, and ears flapped backwards. That you can tell that elephant is no way going to back off. So when an elephant does that, you always give them space. So what we normally do when you're out on a drive, we always have to escape routes. We, they demand what we call respect, they demand space, so we always give them space. So those are the signs that you tell you that an elephant is agitated. This is so interesting, we're going to sit here and wait what they will do next. I agree with you, team, totally. And the good news about elephants, you can very easily read their body language, unlike their buffaloes, which will always surprise you by their behavior. Now, the wind has picked up here where I am. You can tell from the vegetation, from the grass there, you can see how it's being blown by the wind. I'm not sure how many nautical miles this wind is traveling, but, what the wind has done is to wake these cuts up. As much as still hot, the wind, I think, has reduced the temperature a little bit, but you can tell the lioness is still panting. And also, it made the cubs to wake up. And there's one that's creeping to the left. Let's see if it's gonna come out from a particular bush, because Bungay, who is on the camera today, has very sharp eyes like an eagle, and have seen that one particular cub moving to the left. We 
still have to wait for her to come out from the thickets there. Let's just, that's the exactly one corner. Terry, very good question. And Terry, you're asking, is it true that lionesses in one pride would ovulate at the same time? Terry, that's correct. That happens many times. And Terry, you'll at times see lionesses with two or three different litters that are a week or two weeks old or two weeks rather apart. So that's very possible. You'll get especially sisters or first cousins are going in estrus at the same time. Terry, one advantage or one plus of that is because when maybe one or two lionesses should go out hunting, for example, to bring down a prey like this, the zebra that you see there on your screen, Terry, the lionesses or the one lion, lioness left behind, the cubs would do what we call allo nursing. And a cub, regardless whether that's the biological mother, they would suckle from any female in the pride. That's very true and it's very, very correct. And that gives uh, the leonesses the, the, the strength or the advantage of succeeding in bringing up their cubs. Now I'm taking you back to where we were. Remember I had given you a quiz and I told you we got a Batlua eagle right there. And I was saying earlier, Batlua eagles will be the first one to see <laughs> Tracy, you see a male, watch and wait, you're seeing a female, and I'll go with a female. Apparently, it's a female, and it has two white bands. If you look carefully, there's the white uh, at the bottom or at the end of the wings, and there's the black band, and then a lower white, and that's a female. Very well done. So, I was saying earlier, in most skills, when you see lions or other predators bring down a prey and there's a carcass, apparently the bachelors will be the very first one uh, to pick the carcasses even before the vultures. And I am going to wait here. It cools up a little bit and most likely these cubs are going to rise up and shine and maybe start eating as we take you to another colleague of mine. The Batilia eagles are one of my favorites, and sometimes when they fly, it's magical seeing those margins to tell a male and a female. Now here we have these elephants, and the one to the right, left, is not happy. That's a young female, and the one to the right, that's a young bull. So bull, by the age of baby 16, they always walk out of the herd. Lian, wow, what a good welcome to you. Welcome to this show. Six-year-old, thank you so much for your question. Do elephants cry? Elephants will mourn like us humans. They have feelings, they have different characters. So they don't necessarily cry, but they come into mourning like us humans. So in other way, in other terms, they can say they can be sad not necessarily cry like we do cry. So I want to tell you a difference between a male elephant and a female elephant. So Big James is going to pan slightly to the right so that we can see the big bull there. So when you look at the bull, you see on the very base of the task where it leaves, it connects to the, to the skin, it's always thick in bulls. Females have smaller. The head is a bit rounded shape, while the heads of the females are a little bit almost triangular. When you look at the backs, they have a slightly a concave back, while the females are almost flat. And then the big bulls, always you will see the size the, the, the bulls tend to be bigger in size as compared to the females. So that is one of the easiest way to identify bulls from a long distance away. 
from cows and especially when they're out in the open bulls will always be by themselves so when you find elephants in a herd most majority are females look at the, that youngster there so when the big bull came in they all stopped there he went to sniff all of them and then went back to grazing this is a very interesting behavior to watch in elephants I'm still going to wait here, see where these elephants are heading to. It seems like a very interesting behavior that we're witnessing here. So as you wait here, I'm gonna send you to another safari vehicle. Pitiful now standing right here with this beautiful striped animal, which is a common or plain zebra or betul zebra, right there. Interesting things. And you look at the one we just now focus on it. It's a little it's a visible stripe than the other one was on the left hand side. So they are very much sometimes can be unique and looking. And their stripe also they are unique on this animal and not all look the same. As they all look the same, but they not look the same. All unique. You can see one of them telling us that he is a stallion among this group of zebra that are around here. So they mostly associate with wildebeest, impalas and giraffe. We now could be that the giraffe is not far away, also impalas not far away. And they always find them in a very open area, short grasses, if it happens. That's why during a thick season where it's covered with trees, grass tallest, they won't love it. They're more likely to move out of here, going into an area where it's a lot open. If you know, somebody knows of an area in Satara in a Kruger National Park that we mainly find them, they all get around. See how they move through the bush, that's why the Dazzle means. And that's how they now is a collective of them, called Dazzle of Zebra, just because of a well blend in with a stripe. Rick, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. You want to know how do the zebra clean themselves? So mainly, you know, they are very much dusty animals. Quick leak to Mara, sorry. I'm going to take you there quickly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking this players might be coming here down for a drink. Just hold on a minute. Are you having there, Bungay? Keep coming. Just hold on one minute. So let's get another spot. I think one of the females have come to this stream to have a little drink is what I want to show you. Just hold on right there. Now hold on, hold on. Um, how is it there? Still can't see the cubs yet. Let's just have a look at the cubs first. And we're just waiting to see if the female will come and have a drink. And ladies and gentlemen, remember this is a live and interactive safari. So what's happening here, we have this one lioness, and I think she wanted to come for a drink, then she changed her mind. I'm not sure very why, I'm not sure exactly why, but let me just reposition myself, because we've got perfect light, and she's out with two of the cabs. And I just thought they were coming for a drink, they got very close to the stream, and she changed her mind, not sure why. Maybe she thought the place to go down the stream was very tricky, having the cubs. That's my guess now. And you can hear the watered lapwings very noisy. Of course, that is uh, what you're hearing, uh, alum calls. They're not very comfortable with those two cubs there. Even I think the cubs may go for their chicks. I'm not sure they'll try break their eggs because they 
lapwings are ground nesters. So there she got one of the cubs following her. And I'm sure they want to be a bit adventurous playing where they are. Look at the spots in those beautiful bundles of joy. My guess is they're anything between two and a half to three months old. And the other day I saw some milk teeth in them and they were trying to eat meat with the parents. I'll watch them very carefully and find out exactly where they want to go as we take you to another location. zebra where they've privileged to see young cubs lionesses so we're back into this dazzle of zebra um, was taken immediately away before i answered pro correctly in that question of how do they these animals stay cleaned with zebra like donkeys most and they are more likely to roll around in soil dust bath and then from there they just get up and run around you know shiver the body and I'm so sorry that's an airplane probably landing close by to one of their airstrip around here so it's gonna noise is gonna go quickly away so that's why they, that's how they do they're more likely to also see zebra roll in the burn sections in this area where do with the do fire breaks for protection they see them go over these because it's you know it, it's burned up dark for them to actually well blend in when they get out that dark perch of burned for their own safety camouflage but of course they for them that's how they do they they actually do kind of like take care of one another in terms of licking one another that way when they're together like this in this group all take care of each other but of course for them to be cleaned um not 100 percent sure because a lot of time you see them roll over and over in in the soil and get out you know hardly to see the you know stripe even so that's my answer for that question really so they animal like this they are very much likely to survive probably five days without water if it happens they don't actually have to they drink quite often but if it's no water they can go for at least five days where they're actually incredible animals compared to most animal, especially smallest animal around here. And for them, prefer, you know, plane like this is for their own defense. Defense mechanisms, it counts on such animals or as in a group or individual animals, because then they're able to see, they have a chance of see far before the predators come close to them. The tail, you might ask, why they always wag their tails like this. You know, also at night, you'll find a zebra do that, not even the flies, but they're so sensitive, especially on their rump. They always make sure there's no, nothing land on them. Flies, anything will be also wiped off or whipped off by that beautiful tail they got. And the tails on animals play important roles some animals they use them for communications of course when an animal is not happy when you talk about cats some they actually communicate when they're in a moving group they will use their tail but so we'll uh, i'll leave this zebra here and go search for probably cats around in this area probably clamba never know That's correct. I mean, uh, tails in most animals count a lot when it comes to communication, including the lions. 
lions lose their tails, lose their ears, and their tails come in handy, especially when we call them the follow me signs. Look at that small little cub there that is feeding, and you imagine the cub and the mother walking in the tall grass like here. So what the cub will do is just to look at the tip of the tail of the mother. Play good question you're asking whether lions would hunt better in much cooler temperatures. I would say yes, because they need to run. And I'm sure earlier uh, you were seeing how these lionesses were panting. So the heat is not good for them and they're not able to sprint very well if it is too hot. So low temperatures will always help them. But I can tell you, lions will hunt any time of the day. Even in the heat of the day, you see uh, lions hunting. And I've got one of the females there that I've started to devour. The zebra with one of the cubs. How beautiful is that? It's always very good when you see the success story of lionesses or lions from when they start hunting to bringing uh, the prey down and then to start seeing them uh, feeding on what they have worked for. And in this particular pride, I'm so very happy uh, to see their success because they got four cubs that apparently the other day I had missed them for like six days. And the first time I saw them was yesterday morning. Just look at them, how they're enjoying uh, that zebra meal. And for those of you who could be joining us now, this is the River Pride. I got a feeling come tomorrow, this zebra will be done. And not sure how in the background there we got some elephants that are just running towards this towards these lionesses. You can see how their behavior has changed. Because I think the elephants have picked the smell of uh, these lionesses, and that's why they're behaving like that. And well, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to thank you so very much for all your questions and for all your comments. And how wonderful to know this has been coming to you live. And we come live to you every other day. Beautiful. Didn't actually have to drive far away from the zebra now. We just come across this beautiful bird of prey here. You know, we've been seen battling together always. And male and female sometimes are mostly solitary, sometimes pair when they're breeding. But there you're looking at the family. So on the far right, that's a male. You can tell by looking at the lot of a dark covered from all the way to the end of these wings. But in this eagles, hardly to see the tail. That's why they call this day a short tail eagle. And then in the middle, that would be the mother of the one on the left. That's the one of a, a juvenile in this, in this pair of this bird. The whole family here. So you can see this young one is not even sure what is happening. So it's well taken care of. Both parents would take care of it juvenile in terms of hunting for it and always bring food into that branches now this seems to be resting but again this is how they hunt for them resting you know it's all about you know staring around and check what is available for them to go down get it and it's one of the eagle that you must see during a hot day and then they fly right up in the sky and of course, skin around in the ground. They have very much incredible. Our side also sends smell they pick up. It is easy when it's hot enough. And that's why mostly a bird of prey, most of the vultures, those the scavengers, we know for sure. But when it's cloudy, they don't like flying around too much because it's a waste of time that they don't pick up the thermos very quickly. It was a beautiful yawn in a female in the middle. 
You should probably think of probably go hunt or they just well fed on anything right now. I'm not sure. They do sometimes go down to water hole to drink and see them do that. You know, it's such a beautiful because, you know, you'd imagine such a color bird like this with a beautiful red face and their legs are also slightly same as the face. But, you know, seeing them drinking, it's, it's so beautiful. They are day hunter birds, which they prefer hunting. During the day, at night, they'll be resting. They won't do anything at night. They find the branches like that. And that's how they take the easy for the whole night before they come active again in the next morning. And you often see them compete with, you know, vultures and tawny eagle because they're also all the scavengers these birds are just talking about. And whenever it's a big kill or small kill, you find a lot of vultures gathering around because even it's a small kill, they don't know. Indeed, look, look, it's, this is indeed a beautiful sighting of, you know, not often see, you know, bird of prey, you know, all three of them together when I drive here, I almost thought that, I don't know there what's happening, but until I realize, oh, it's one of the baby they got there. So it's nice family to take care of the young one, make sure, see that baby is gonna slightly, won't change color now as a parent's color yet, until it's at least anything from at six to seven half years old and that's there you're able to see the color change and they live longer lifespan if anything for 18 sometimes years get up to probably 20 possible above depending on their survival but of course depend on the food source they get around you know when we talk about birds that they often killed especially this type of animal birds like this eagle i mean vultures most in this country they kill them for african muti and this is what some woman need and somehow use them for some mixture medicine for cure some of our disease or i don't know but you know this is what they kill them for or hard to see actually a long time ago we look for battalion we look for vultures out there we wouldn't see any anyway. but the number has picked up now we're glad that reserve take care of this wild animal Olinda, you want to know if the, the juvenile can fly at fast or far on itself so in this case um it's the this bird the young one doesn't have much experience as a parent yet it can fly but then it's a uh, it's not actually very good or safe for that bird because sometimes may end up going into the area where it's not going to be found if it doesn't return back to the same area where the parents have left them. And remember, here it could be that is the nest, the nest is not far away. So they just come out or yesterday trying to make sure that baby is able to get used to balance in these branches. So yeah, they don't think will fly far. So I'm going to leave these birds here yeah, as a family move on my mission is Columbus this afternoon to look for it but really are one of my favorite birds also elephants seem to be one of my favorite animals now here in the Mara we have a big herd of elephant split up there's a big bull that came in and got a little bit confused. Look at that tiny calf there. I reckon that is almost, I'd say, three months old. It's teeny tiny. And you can see we have an, a teenage there that has no tail. Steph, thank you so much for your question. How do elephant communicate? Elephants communicate in a very low frequency sound called the infrasound, a sound that we cannot hear from this close distance that we are to these elephants. Secondly, when they rumble, 
the, those vibrations go through the ground and they are able to communicate through an elephant through those vibrations that they feel on the ground. So major communication is the infrasound and sometimes they communicate through vocal communication. Sometimes you hear elephant trumpeting. So those are kind of communication that elephants communicate but the major one is the infrasound where it can be communicated over even up to 20 30 meters apart seems like the one to the right that's the matriarch now matrix are the ones that control the movement of the herd down here where we are we are in a marsh area so elephants will congregate in these marshes every day they walk in and out of the marshes on a daily basis natasha thank you so much for your question do elephant herds leave the herds to go and give birth one reason of oh, come back to you natasha we have a very interesting behavior here elephants walking towards the right. I don't, I don't know what to scoop them. So elephants sometimes they'll give birth in the same herd, but they're known to have what we call nurseries, where they'll walk in numbers and then go give birth around the area. In a region further north, we have a place called the Abadea Forest, where elephants have known to be going into a place where they'll give birth in a communal place called the nursery. But then, not always that elephants will leave the herd. They actually welcome the young ones when these elephants give in birth. It is so welcoming when they all watch when our mother gives birth. They're all super excited. So not always that they leave the herd to give birth. We'll watch these elephants over here as we send you over to another safari vehicle. Truly, team is wonderful and exciting to see a mother or when a mother elephant gives birth, and it's even more exciting to see lionesses give birth. Now you can tell it's time to eat, and I guess and I've been guessing that is the mother of these four cubs, and you can see how busy all of them are eating, and I'm sure either she is helping them to show them the soft part as a third lioness comes in play not sure where she's been look at her belly and i think it's more of flesh in her belly than maybe being pregnant it could be wrong now we have accounted for three there's still a fourth one somewhere as i said earlier Two and a half to three months could be the age of these cubs. And you can tell they got some teeth in them. Otherwise, without teeth, they'll not even dare or try to cut or sneer uh, this flesh here from what was a zebra before. And just like humans, lion cubs are born without teeth. And then they first get the baby teeth, which later on they're going to lose and have permanent teeth that will be able to cut hard tough meat see how they're really trying trying to sneer a bone there i would suggest if i was these calves myself i would go for the meat the soft part but this also helps them to sharpen their teeth which i would still say they're very delicate I'm not sure how much meat they're getting from those bones or from the ribs where I guess the adults have cleaned them more and making the lives of these cubs a little bit tough. Unlike vultures, where we see them feeding uh, differently, you get them regurgitating food. <laughs> so I'm trying to imagine uh, this one lioness will allow the cubs to come on the other side and that will make me stay right here, waiting to see that happen as we take you to another location.
we are back with that pack of wild dogs with the youngsters and they've just started waking up um, and you can see there's a bit of interaction amongst them so the adults were getting up and they were interacting with one another and of course the young younger pups started joining in looking it looks like there's all together 18 wild dogs here lying down now there were some impalas earlier on but as soon as these wild dogs were started getting excited um, those impala ran off And I wonder, I don't think it's going to be too long before these wild dogs are going to start moving and possibly looking for opportunity to hunt. Now looking at some of their bellies, some are full but others are definitely not. I just want to make sure, maybe there's a hyena moving at the back because you can see all of them. Well, most of the adults have actually picked up their head and started staring down. Oh, look. Just listen to this wild dog. I was doing like a, it sounded like a snarl and immediately all the others looked in that direction. Might be that Ahina pr probably thought it might have been something else. Just trying to see at the back if I can see anything. So I definitely had and I are gonna spend some more time here and hopefully we'll be able to see these wild dogs moving. Alrighty guys, we are back with these lions now, the ones that we found earlier, the sub-adults, the two boys, and then the one female, and they are unfortunately looking flatter than when we left them. We were hoping that there might be a little bit of action happening already. However, unfortunately not the case. Um, but the oryx are still around, there's some, or the Gimsbok. There's also some springbok in the area. I saw some red hartebeest driving here as well. So there's a very good opportunity for them still. I just don't feel like that opportunity is going to present itself for them now, especially not with their eyes closed. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe in about uh, maybe an hour or so, we might get them coming through and then you know the the one side of the thing is with the with the lions being <laughs> as flat and as still as that the animals will actually um walk by and not know about them and then they might be able to so we just had a question from paul how long do lions sleep for and paul um so okay the books will tell you that they sleep, or not the books, but it's common knowledge that they sleep about 20 hours a day. That is not correct, okay? Um, they don't sleep the whole day. They are inactive for about 20 hours a day. That is very true. So they, at the moment, they're sleeping, but I'd say they sleep probably around anything between 10 to 12, maybe 14 hours. However, that other six hours, 
they just don't spend walking around or actively hunting or doing all of these things. What they do then is they lie down and they clean each other and they just rest, you know. They don't sleep necessarily. So I'd say around 10 to 12 hours is a good estimate for for physically sleeping a day, which is quite important, you know, for them not only to sleep but also to um, be inactive. You know, with lions they have to lead a very energy-efficient life, which means... They have to be inactive as much as possible because they never know when their next meal will be. It's not like a buffalo that can walk two feet and there's a blade of grass in front of him. Um, With the lions, they might sometimes go a day without hunting or two days or three days, so they have to absolutely save as much energy as possible when they can. But yeah, that is what they are doing at this very moment, not thinking about hunting, maybe dreaming about it. Well, we seem to have lost uh, one of the locations, but these things will happen. You'd imagine us broadcasting to you live from the African wilderness once in a while. Those challenges will come. But on the good news, just see what we got. Three or all the four cubs now playing together. Now, what I want to do with the four cubs playing together is slowly to look under their tails. And I can tell you now for a fact of the four cubs, two of them are girls. So I'm yet to confirm the other two. So one big plus of lionesses having many cubs together, this is one of the reasons. Play, play, play and play. Strengthen their muscles. If they need to run or take off for one reason or another, The other day you saw them crossing a small stream, like the migration of the wildebeest. They decided to be small wildebeest or to do a mini migration for me. That was quite exciting. It's not very far from where we are, where they were doing that. Hello there. Join the rest of them and play. Now, I've been watching the four of them. Three of them seem to be very playful, but the one on the left... Sometimes he just looks, sometimes he's involved, she's engaged with the three, plays a little bit. Look at that, don't have a lot of grass in the mouth. You do not feed your brother or sister grass. Full adult uh, predators, lions or cheetahs or leopards, we have seen them eating grass for obvious reasons. When they eat so much and they have issues in their bellies, now, we need to play. It's trying to put her into play. That's the one that doesn't like playing a lot. The one to the right of your screen. It's always so fun. Anything baby for me, anything kids, anything young for me, any baby animal, it gives me lots of joy. So again, as I said, I want to spend a few more minutes here. Watching under the tails, that's a girl for sure. And we'll keep updating you uh, how many boys or how many girls are in this uh, group of cubs as we go to another location. That sounds awesome, David. Well, we're still here with these elephants, and the most remarkable thing has happened. Can you see it there, BK? This, um, that elephant there has somehow managed to get a towel from camp or a towel ended up somewhere there and is now flinging it all over the place. You can do it again. I saw it and I thought, what actually, we both became, I saw it at the same time and thought, what is that? 
was it? The usual grey towel from camp. <laughs> it was quite funny. Beautiful, beautiful head. Look at that one star suckling there. Awesome. Hi, Mikey. You'd like to know what the average lifespan of an elephant is? It's about 60 years. Can go up to 70, and it can be before that as well. So usually I like to say between 50 and 70. And for an African elephant, their lifespan is a bit shorter than the Asian elephant, at least recorded lifespans. Now, there have been some Franklins that were very upset in this drainage just off to the south there. And then basically between this pan, or basically on the south, southern end, end of that drainage is our camp. So we suspect that there may be something down there. So we're going to stick around in this area. Hopefully we'll find us a leopard. Great elephants are what the animals should look and how they do playing, especially in a group. But here it's about the same with this. We come across a beautiful herd of buffalo, which I assume must be the buffalo we seen yesterday. But the interesting thing is now they're making their way north, which yesterday they were making their way south. So this is a time they finally, now they finally return makes them to be around here. It's a water station, which is a water station, they're not far apart, so they have enough time to move around, eat, and then visit all of this water hole around here, which is, it's very good for them. But they all look very relaxed. As you can see, some of them are right far in the end. So I'm gonna wait here another moment and then see if this herd come out to the open area. We have been following this group of bull elephants all the way from Edlovo Dam and now they're heading into the southwestern corner of Pridelands. Hello old chap, young chap actually, middle-aged chap, not too old, not too young. Beautiful boy, just on his way to follow the rest of them. In fact, Kumo, the big elephant bull, is with them. Hi everyone, my name's Mike. Chris Odie joined us at Eco Training Pride Lands, and of, of, of course, as you know, we always have lots of elephants all over the place. Hey there, the guy. See that? Opened his ears to us like that just to listen and gather some information. What a gorgeous male elephant. Yeah, and then you can see the others. Oh, he's going to break a massive piece of leadwood. Look, that's Kuma over there, the big elephant bull. He's about. Oh, I thought he was going to break that whole branch. What is that? Leadwood? No, it's a knob thorn. I thought he was going to break that whole knob thorn branch down which would have been pretty impressive. Now the angle is quite tricky because we're looking basically into the sun, but that would have been really amazing if he broke that whole branch off. It's, uh, it's interesting, this, this group of bull elephants was quite funny. They had a bit of a standoff with a warthog earlier. And interestingly, the warthog actually won that particular standoff. They moved off and they've been steadily moving along ever since then. You can see how Oh yeah, of course, and Odie was just reminding me now, there was also a lioness that came, and that's actually ultimately why these elephants moved off, because there was a lioness at in Dlovo Dam just before our drive started. We haven't been able to find her since, but she basically, the, the, we were downwind of, well, she was, the elephants were downwind of her and ended up frightening them off while they smelt her, because they had lots of babies. What I'm going to try and do is try and reposition us just ever so slightly to move us back 
just so that we've got a little bit more of the of the right light. It's so nice to to have these elephants so close to us. We've been following them. We took a bit of a loop round, and as you can see, they've uh, stopped here to feed on these very palatable-looking thorny branches. Delicious. I am in the Masemara and I got the pride of lions here that we call the river pride. And please, ladies and gentlemen, remember to ask us questions and send comments to hashtag World Earth on Twitter or at FC in the comment section of the YouTube chat channels. For the youngsters, you may also do the same by sending us emails, kids questions at worldearth.com. TV. Now look at those three beautiful cubs. Talk to their form. There's a three there, but there's one that I think is very hungry and she has been with mum for the better part of the last five minutes devouring that zebra. Let's see if you can hear mum just pulling off flesh from that carcass. This carcass is about a day and a half old. They hunted this zebra yesterday morning. Camel Park is saying how adorable. And this is just so cool to see the mother being joined by her cubs eating together. Beautiful light under a quinine tree, some nice grass, just to cover uh, the freshness, I would say, of these cacas, and that's the elephant grass, small little bushes. And the sun, as it's slowly setting to the west, is just shining on them. And you can see two of the lionesses there, just, you know, slowly uh, digesting what they must have eaten earlier, because you know how energy efficient lions are. And they just want to eat a little bit. They just want to go and play. And that's where those four cubs have again regrouped together, either to play, but I think another cub just came in the location, and that's what has piqued uh, their attention. Let's look at those two females there. They're in the same pride, but once in a while they'll have altercations. <coughs> Jareth, good question, and you're asking how frequently uh, do these uh, lions eat. Now, it depends on a number of factors. Of course, if we talk of this particular pride, for the last six days, about a week, their previous uh, prey was a huge uh, male buffalo. And the prey before that was another huge male buffalo. And it is these three females you're seeing here that brought those buffaloes down. And yesterday morning, they brought down a smaller prey, and it's this zebra you see here. So it's basically every week, every six, seven, eight days max, they'll always uh, bring a prey down. But in between, sometimes we do not know. They could be walking the grasses, they might catch a hedgehog, they might catch a pangolin, they might catch some feathered friend, uh, like a, a guinea fowl or some franklins. We, we always think in between, they'll catch small bits of animals and they'll feed on them. But for the major preys, it's the two buffaloes I just uh, mentioned and this uh, zebra here. This is one site that you don't want to leave. You want to remain here enjoying the females or the adults eating or the cubs playing. And I'm sure you'll be back with me as we take you to another location. Beautiful, David. So I would also do the same. You know, why not looking at the 
calves playing around, you know. So we're still here with this herd of buffalo. Now they, as you can see, they're getting now comfortable, you know, coming closer to us, but not to us. Probably what attracts them is grasses, which is probably sweet grass around in this area. Seen them feeding around the sack also. They're not, doesn't look like they're going to move anyway. But here yeah, they're all mixed up, hey. All that's how the, it builds a group of herds. Look at the one of this young one. That is also part of this group. It's what makes them sometimes come so much protective, having so much of a young one in a herd. Leroy, Leroy. Welcome to the beautiful show, your show this afternoon. You want to know if African buffalo, savannah buffalo, you only eat grass. Um, but grass, you know, it's serious. Major for them, for their diet and survival. And they can browse a little bit, take herbs a little bit. But grass is, it's, it's one of the main diet they need. Reminding me of the dry drought that take place few years ago the plants was out there for them but they didn't make it and we seen them eat a lot of these plants but then they all keep losing their weight so they needed grass also which means grasses it's their main staple diet for for this animal so that's why you know we're in the lower field savanna area where it's plentiful of grasses during the rainfall and all type of grasses that occurred around here, as well as the buffalo grasses, sweet grasses, all of those finger grasses. It's all these animals' favorite. And looks like they're just looking at me, one of these bull in the middle there. So what now you can notice about the difference between a female and a male? You can look at the, I know one of the male that is looking at us right there. And the both side of of him is just all cows. It's all female, as you can see, is in the middle now. But the only difference you can look at or to tell the male has got a boss, which is a helmet on front of the head, and the cow is just a normal horn. So it looks like they're loving grazing around here. Anyway, we're gonna leave them in peace take you to some other location where else and go look for anything else we're going to find. So alrighty guys, they back down again now, but the funniest thing just happened. <laughs> they were all sleeping and the next moment all three of their heads pop up and Well, we must have lost uh, Swallow, and again, uh, just to be able to get to you from the African wilderness, once in a while we'll have these technical challenges, but good news, I have not left the location of the position I was, and the cubs I had before or under this quinine tree have even become more playful than before. The one lioness has kept eating and has been joined now by a different cub, not the very fast one, because if you look at her, she's now not nibbling the rib, has chosen not to go for the lip, for the chubs, but has gone for places of things much softer and got much more flesh. Look at that from there. Not sure whether that's the pelvic area, but this one definitely is eating some flesh with her small little baby milk teeth. Now, not sure why this one lioness has been eating more than the other two, but definitely she is the mother. I've been debating the last few minutes, could we be having two different litters here? Two mothers with two cubs each, maybe. But I've always thought the half tail is the mother of all the four cubs. Look at that. Typical. 
typical for all cubs, puppies, kittens at this particular tender age. Anything zero to four months or once they start playing, say two months to six months. Hello there. See the wind has picked up and I think they are also enjoying the cool breeze. It's so funny when you see them chasing each other's tail. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live. This is a live and interactive safari. It's always nice when you watch little cubs when they're eating or nibbling on a carcass. So cute. Now, on this other side of the Mara, we have the Ololo pride. These are sub-adult lions. They are almost being kicked out of the pride. But then we have an intruder who came into this territory not a while ago. We have a lion by the name of Splitnos, or aka Bob Male, who came in and the mothers of these teenagers kicked them out yesterday. So these youngsters will, will be kicked out in less than about two months of old because we have an intruder who came in here. So the dominant male of the Ololo pride is called Ololashe. Ololashe was mating not long ago up in the plains. So this family here is ready to defend their own. So we have one of the prime lionesses here. She has a collar, so she she's the one that is keeping split nose at bay. This time is almost cooling off. So these lions will be active in not maybe about an hour from now. And then they'll be going to their normal night activity. Lions prefer hunting at night because their vision is much better. Reckon they can see six much better than us at night. Then with this big family, then they are very, very much successful when it comes to hunting. Look at those two culling together because it's cooling off they need some warmth so they walk out of the bushes to get the last warmth when the sun is setting this is super cute to see so this territory overlaps a big territory we are almost close to a pride called the river pride the one that was with the cubs so if this pride becomes successful it will conquer a very big pride and territory. So as we wait here watching these youngsters cuddling, I'm going to take you to another safari jeep. We just witnessed something pretty spectacular. Now we saw one knobthorn tree in the distance which had one big branch that was still green. And Kumo, that very big elephant at the back there, decided that he liked the look of that particular branch. And he wrapped his trunk around it and broke that whole branch, which was bigger than most trees, off of this huge knobthorn and has immediately started feeding and all the other younger elephant bulls all crowded around to try and get to some of that green stuff as you can see there although kumo is being quite protective and he's chased most of them away from his food which he worked so hard for although he made it look so easy i've often thought you know it would take some huge heavy machinery to break that branch off the tree because look at the size of it so that's a huge elephant bull and look at the thickness of that tree that's a thick branch i mean it would take huge machinery to get that off there and he broke it with one yank just wrapped his trunk around reached up and just pulled it remember this elephant bull here probably weighs five tons it's a huge bull so it was incredible to watch
Melissa, elephants have so many uses for their trunks. I mean, it's literally the multi-tool of the animal world. You find elephants often just sniffing with the trunk. Of course, it's connected to, well, it's part of the nose. It's an extended long nose. So they'll sniff the air and, and smell things. Their eyesight's not great. So sometimes, like this elephant's doing here, you'll see it's using the tip of its trunk to feel around, to avoid most of the spikes, to know what's good and tasty and what's not. They can course it's super muscular there are more muscles in that trunk than our whole body someone once quoted me 50,000 individual mu individual muscle strands so that's incredible dexterity that they have they can use it for fighting and jousting uh, of course they can use it to sniff into the mouth of another elephant to gain information often the males will use it this there's, there's literally some, if you can think all the things that you can do with your nose your hand combined that's basically what an elephant can do with that one thing i mean there it's an incredible thing it's the best tool i think any animal has in the animal kingdom combined with the tusks that you see there it literally can do anything this young elephant bull decides he wants to come and say hi i wonder if he wants this little bit of green branch that's right next to us <laughs> This might be the same elephant that we had in our camp earlier today. It was incredible. I think it's exactly this elephant. It literally came right next to us and fed on a branch just like this. Kylie, there are two types of elephants, and they're still debating whether there are more. So there's these elephants, African elephants, the ones that you find all over Africa, and of course Asian elephants that you find in India and Southeast Asia. Now... There is some debate whether African elephants can be split into some subgroups, being the desert elephants that you find around Namibia and the forest elephants that you can find in some of the Central African republics uh, and the countries around that area. However, as of yet, it's still just two species. That's amazing. This elephant is so close. Look, you're, you're looking right now. Melissa, if you're still watching, look at that. Use its trunk and its tusks together to snap these little branches, these green leaves now remember the eyesight's not great you probably could see the green but i think it was more likely smelling these branches and knowing that there was green food here it's so awesome to be so close to this elephant quick link the wild dogs are, are active at angala so these wild dogs just made a kill on an impala and uh, basically the impala they like it wasn't even one minute and they've um, pulled it down and now feeding off of it now we'll have to see if the rest of the pack will eventually come and join up what i might just do i'm just going to move slightly back because they have moved closer towards us idea what what happened here so that while those wild dogs that we were sitting with earlier on as they were lying down there was a herd of impala that came through and immediately they got up and started chasing those impala and they managed to catch this, uh, catch this female impala and immediately from there on they started opening up the impala to get to the heart and the lungs all the organs and started um, ripping that out answer the question now i just want to reposition again because this bar is going to be in the way from where they are so i just want to reposition the vehicle slightly just so that we can still be able to see them now they'll if the whole pack is here miley it might be that this impala won't even last 10 minutes and then it'll be done already with these two wild dogs they've ripped up most of the organs um they've already started like tucking into where the ribs and the um, groin area as well so let's give it some time see if the rest of the pack comes and joins up but this is an incredible sighting to watch 
And you'll see they can divide quite quickly because the thing is they need to eat it as quickly as possible before the hyenas um, get here. They'll see very like quite alert of what's going on around them. So remember also they do have the pups, so they need to feed as quickly as they possibly can. Um, so that at least if their belly is full enough, they can still give it to the pups as well. The other one just went around to make sure that everything is safe and then probably from there on coming back to the spot. With this particular pack, we find that both the males and the females, um, they not really, they don't really show any dominance on, on um, who hunts and who feeds first. It's mainly the alpha male and female that will lead most of the hunts. So if the alpha male is already uh, broken away from the group, then the group will probably follow the alpha female in this, um, and vice versa. But so here, it's both a male and a female. It looks like um, that made this kill, and of course the male is feeding off the uh, the um, impal at the moment, and the females won't. But you see, there's no competition there. There's no fighting. It's basically they're just trying to get as much as they can off of those impal because they also know because of this commotion, there might be some hyenas in the area as well. So what we're going to do? It looks like the other one. They started moving off. So what we'll do is let's spend some time here because the other one, that male, might have gone to call the rest of the pack to bring them here to come and finish up. Bingos might seem like they're feeding pretty slowly, but it's also because the rest of the pack is not here. So these ones are actually looking around to see if there's any danger. There was so much commotion. Um, happening that because of sorry, I'm just want to just want to point out this eagle on the top of the tree as well. But because of all the commotion that was happening around here, they were looking out to see if there's any danger. If the rest of the pack was here, they'd probably have finished this a lot quicker than they would have done now. So there's a tawny eagle that just landed on this branch, and so often um, hyenas will follow these tawny eagles and vultures. So we're gonna. Basically, just wait here and see if the rest of the pack will come back to this Impala. to see we basically gonna wait here and see what happens it might be that these wild dogs because they have split up might not come back here they might just carry on maybe there's other impala that they could have uh, caught on along the way because I mean there's all together 21 wild dogs we managed to count them and 10 of them are pups and 11 are some of their or the adults so there might be a good opportunity good chance that they caught more than just one impala so we'll just have to patiently wait and hopefully be rewarded with a pack coming through to come finish off this Impala. Minamu, 
Not really. They just, whatever Impala they can get, they'll go for. Um, I think just unfortunate for this one um, is that she was separated from the rest of the herd. And because probably she was the one trailing at the back is when the wild dogs eventually caught up with her. Now I could hear there was some Franklin's alarm calling. Now that's a sign that possibly the Franklin's could have alarm called, uh, alarm called at another eagle that came um, and landed in a tree at the back. Or it could be because those wild dogs are on their way um, down back to this Impala. I am in the Masimara and I got a pride of lions here and this is the River Pride. Please remember to send us questions or comments and you may do that by sending them to hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter or at FC in the comment section of the YouTube chat channels. Now these cubs have remained playful since the last time you're with me and the place even getting busier, better, more. And especially these two, where me and Bungay are trying to believe they could be boys. Bungay is the gentleman behind the camera today. But I think that one is a female, so both of us are wrong. We think we got two boys and two girls for now, but we need to do more confirmation. Guitarist, wonderful comment. Yes, and you're saying such a beautiful scene. Guitarist, 100%. You could not ask for better than this, especially uh, on a Monday afternoon. It couldn't be anything cooler or cooler than this. This is quite epic just to see these cubs going for each other. Of course, he's all friendly. They are all the same litter. Yeah, definitely that one. There's a girl, no doubt about it. Hide and seek. Spence is much stronger. A bit of wrestling. I imagine when they sleep tonight, they'll be very tired. And they'll make the mother have a very easy night. I'm surprised they have not gone in that crevice or that opening or that hole. We have seen them sometimes do that as they play. But apparently it could be dangerous. You might get a reptile there in the form of a snake. Now this lioness must have been very hungry. Bridget, good question. And you're asking how is a new lion pride formed? Now it's very easy. What happens in the lion's dynamics? Any cub here born a female, if it's going to mature to adulthood, the success rate of this cub sometimes is anything 20 to 30 percent. Uh, that's the survival rate of lion cubs. And they face a few challenges, Bridges. And the first challenge they face for me for their mortality, it is hunger. They, they die, so many of them, uh, because of hunger, lack of food. Uh, sometimes they face other challenges of other predators like hyenas or big birds of prey uh, like martial eagles. So if there's any female of the four cubs here, we have identified already two, they're going to remain in this pride. Any males? After two years, two and a half years, they're independent, they can hunt a prey like this, they will slowly and surely get out of the pride. They'll be nomadic for a couple of months or sometimes up to a year. And if the two of them, they may choose to form their own coalition of males or they may join other males forming a much stronger, formidable coalition and that will be their life and they will never come back to this pride. That guarantees the females not mating with your sons to avoid inbreeding. I 
that. This is pretty cool just to watch uh, this pride eating and the cubs playing. I'll be giving a chance to another vehicle to come in the location as we take you to another live location. We've managed to catch the large herd of elephants that we had at Galigo Pan. We just saw the last few when we were there. And now they're all streaming out onto the road. Feels a bit like an elephant parade. Elephant procession. And they're slowly making their way. A couple really nice big females in here. Philip, you'd like to know if female elephants are heavier than male elephants. They're not. So a female elephant at the same age as a male elephant, the elef male elephant will be heavier and taller. Males can get up to six tons, while females are really only getting up to about three tons. And females will look very large, but when you see a big must male, really big, big guy. Um, we saw that one on Philemon's cut line. That was a huge, huge bull. And then he moved towards the herd. And when you see those bulls within the herd, you realize that they are a head taller than the tallest female in that herd and he's just massive compared to everyone else but you only really get to appreciate that when you see a large bull with the rest of the herd it was just amazing the size difference was phenomenal but you're never going to get a female that is five or six tons but males certainly they they could get to that size. I don't know if you can hear in the background, it's quite windy, but there's still some Franklin that are quite upset. And the same drainage I told you about, which is why I've been hanging around in this area. Because I do think that there is a cat about. So more elephants are streaming out and I'm going to sit here and watch it. And hopefully also get another clue about any cat in the bush. It's always nice when you watch elephants interact. Now our lionesses was asleep. They got up because we have a herds of zebras calling. We have the, the stallions that were calling here. So they've already attracted these lions. Seems like it's going to be an exciting afternoon or an exciting evening. Now look at how she is glued to the zebra. We are going. To, we are now going to expect that this line will are going to walk closer to where the zebras are, because the herd of zebra is walking past. So as they do that, I'm going to position back into a good position, so that we see these lions where they're heading. So fingers crossed. That's a young male over there. He's waiting for the sisters to come and join. So lions will coordinate hunt very, very strategic. We have others that will go out to flush, flush the, the prey, while others will walk out to position strategically to get to the prey. Look at how he blends in as we wait here take you over to another safari vehicle. So the members of the pack came to join up again. You can see there's other members that are going to come and join up. Those are 
the hyena in the back. And because of that, a few of the wild dogs have moved around, probably to go and chase the hyena. Now they're coming back. And the wild dog probably has some of the base senses in the um, bush, like their hearing, smell, eyesight. I think from all of them, probably their, their smell and hearing would be the best. And just notice how they, whenever they feed, how they keep their tails up. And there's also, just to point out, so earlier on, there was um, some hyena uh, just off to the left. Now, apparently, what looked like all the pups on our standing with hyena was earlier on coming to see what all the commotion is about. Imagine if we can see them like after they finish feeding um, and they feed the youngsters. McKedney, those tails do look like a flag at a grand opening. But what an opening on this imp Impala. But basically, that was the whole carcass. I think that was the last one just ran away with what looked like a little part of the head. But that whole car, that whole Impala has just been devoured. So let's look at these youngsters. Now, remember, it's often the ones that show a lot of excitement that are the ones that are going to be fed. Some of the youngsters are actually going to try and beg um, with some of the adults. Michelle, it starts from a very young age. Um, it almost starts like round about, if you had to look at a rough marker, probably around um, two months. Because like up until four months, uh, they'll still be spending time in the den. But what happens then is so they'll feed a lot of mom's milk. But then from there on, some of the older ones, as they go and, or some of the adults, as they go and catch something and, and feed off of it, they'll eventually come back and regurgitate, um, even if the pups haven't even started following them. But now at this stage, they've really started following them. So they are more than capable of, of eating meat. So 
Look at how the pups are slowly trying to get you, like, move a bit closer now. It's just a couple of bones that's left, and one is now finishing the last few scraps off the bones. Just an incredible sighting to watch. And just seeing the whole hunt, how they've taken it down, left the carcass, went to call the rest, and came back and just finished it off. Nikki, very well done. And a beautiful day for you from this morning to this afternoon. Now, you know, anytime you see a bird of prey, I just love asking questions. I ask the first one, the battle ego, and you got it, it was a female. Now, I have another bird of prey here. Hmm. Okay. Who do you think this is? Hashtag World Earth on Twitter. Or at FC in the comment section of the YouTube chat channels. A huge bird of prey. We have seen her many times. Just want to refresh you, and it's just on a Balanite's tree or Shepherd's tree. Look at her tarsis. No Buddha tarsis, depending on her prey. Black chest, white breast, hooked beak, small ish uh, tail, not tail, but uh, feathers behind the head. Chris, you say a snake ego. Very good, very good, Chris. Correct, this is a snake ego, and it's definitely the black chested snake ego. The closest other ego that would confuse or mix with this one would be the martial ego. Very well done, Chris. I'll be moving on and looking for some other stuff for you, and we'll be taking you to another guide. Welcome everybody, back here in Bebelsuk Bebel Dam. A female leopard, she just went into the water hole. I'm going to try and uh, see if I can get around to the other side and see if we also have still our signal static. Just let's do it. Our lionesses have positioned strategically with the youngster with the Tsabadal lion waiting behind the bush. Now one of the lioness has gone to follow the zebras and I think she's going to follow her sister so that they can tag a team to go and follow the zebras and maybe hunt. But it seems like the zebras are walking so fast out in the savannah there. It's going to be very interesting when you see them going, look at how she's positioned. And all the way, all of in the distance, you can see there's another lioness rolling over in the grass. The, we, 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 the lions are... Tala, thank you so much for your question. Whoa, what, six year old? Thank you. Now, a pregnant mother does not find it hard to hunt because she needs to eat as much as she can. But then, if she's already waiting to, about to go to give birth, she will at least isolate herself and go give birth. But being pregnant, pregnant does not deter them from hunting at all. We have around six or seven lions here. And they look at how each and every one is 
walking to find a position. That is basically what lions do when they want to hunt. By concealing themselves in the grass, it will at least make them close the gap between them and the prey. You don't want to make yourself exposed when you're going for something to eat. That's typically what that lion is doing. So young male lions will assist their mothers and their sisters in a hunt. But when it comes to big prey, the big males will always accompany and assist bringing down big prey. For example, if it's a buffalo or a fully grown giraffe, the males not always hunt simply because of they have big manes. Look at that lioness, it doesn't have a mane. So even when it's closer to game, they will not be able to see her. But if it's a big male, big maned lion, then they will expose themselves. The reason why lionesses go for the kill. And also, when it comes to weight, lionesses are... Where? Look at those two there. Lionesses are a little bit lighter in size, so they are more faster when it comes to pursuing prey. So this, this too seems like a little bit curious, watching over as the zebras walk past. So I'm going to sit here, wait for these lands to go for their next move, and I'm hoping tonight they'll find dinner. Taking you over to another safari vehicle. So it's incredible. The, so most of the pack have started moving um, and just gone find a place to lie down. Some with some a little bit of the remain of the impala to feed on. And of course the youngsters are just moving from one adult to another, just trying to beg for some food. But some of them have managed to get some scraps and you can see that those there look like they might have the skin of that impala that they're trying to feed on. And it might be because some of the adults have started moving that it won't be too long before the rest or the youngsters will start joining them. But of course, while they're here, they're just trying to gulp up as much as they possibly can. This has just been unreal to watch them and experience a bit of their behavior. Thomas, with there's quite a few differences um, when you compare hyenas against wild dogs, and if you look at the overall shape, you'll see that a hyena is a slightly different build in comparison to that of a dog. A hyena would probably, if you had to compare them, be more related to a mongoose or uh, something slightly further away in comparison to that of a wild dog, even their whole build. So they have, like, their front part of their body is a lot um, bigger build in comparison to the wild dog. They have smaller ears. Um, they they are not led by an alpha male and alpha female, like you can see with the wild dogs. With hyenas, it's more the matriarch, so it's a, uh, the experienced fe uh, high-ranking female that, would rain, uh, that will reign. And talking about hyena, now also look at the differences. Now look at these wild dogs and from here on, if we go slightly right, oh, those, are, those hyenas just ran off. Um, but basically, I think wild dogs, if you look at their family and how close they're related, they will be more related um, to dogs than to hyenas. Um, even if you had to look at their genus and species. So genus and species, basically, for some of our viewers, um, it's... The, if you had to compare it with people, you'll say it's the, the name and the surname. So, for example, my name is Nikki, my surname is Muller. So, Muller would be the family and Nikki the individual within the family. So, if you look at the genus of a hyena, it's in a completely different family or group than in comparison to the wild dogs. Um, where the wild dogs would probably be more related to something like a jackal, a domesticated dog, in comparison to that of a hyena.
but I'm sure from here on we'll probably slowly start heading off because um, these wild dogs are moving away now and it might be after they move away that these hyenas will come and finish the, the scraps that's left and then um, there'll be nothing left from this impala. Back, welcome to these beautiful spotted cats that we just find right here now. Um, I haven't actually able to identify this female cat that we just find, and it was so quick across the road, and now it's very difficult for us. Once for all, we lost the signal down there, and then we have to come this far. We can able to take you guys, everyone, right inside the little this brushes. But it looks like she's gonna come. She's going to do a little bit of movement. There's a water hole here with the Biff Bevlesuk Dam. As you can see how she does that. I mean, a lot of cats do that. Use trees, stretch, but also stretch then their claws as well. Not only the whole body. So I'm going to able to, if she's going to move down and along that bank of the dam here, we're just going to have to reposition now. I lost her pictures so let's just move around but maybe I'm gonna wait here because she's gonna probably come on my left hand side I'm gonna just wait here Andrew, Andrew, try, try, reposition, catch that leopard, don't let it slip uh, out of your hands. Well, I got different animals here which are not going anywhere after I loved my lions and full cubs just to give other people room to watch them also. I have found what you call crown cranes, the great crown cranes. I'm not going to ask you the names for these birds because I'm sure you know them. It's very difficult to miss them. But on a closer look, it's like a male and a female and two youngsters. They will lay two to three eggs, some reeds near water. And I'm thinking uh, these chicks here have actually almost getting there just a little bit before they get the actual plumage. And these birds, we all know they are omnivores. And currently you can tell how good by being vegetarians. Look at the different plumage in them, comparing to the adults. We'll watch these juveniles for a couple of seconds, and I'm sure Bungay will take you to the adults, or you can have all of them in one frame. See the brown, the tails of the adults, not what the youngsters got. The white, the black on top of the head, and the red wattles right below the neck. Very well, great comment you're seeing. Such a nice head dressing. And I'm sure, yes, they're trying to put their head up and that's very typical of all cranes. Not sure whether I mentioned this is the natural bird of a country called Uganda, west of Kenya. And I wouldn't know what would happen if you get very strong wind. I would want to see how the headdress will behave if it will be blown by the wind. So they won't take advantage of the daylight before it gets dark. And unlike other birds like herons that will eat day and night, this one comes at night, they go roost, so they have to take advantage of all the light as I'm telling them bon appetit and moving on to another location. Right, everybody welcome back here to this cat. Now we find, oh, she came right close to us and then she find herself right there between the water and herself, the background, and then being identified as a talamba, I think. So you can hear a lot of her talking in the background. It's not only myself here, it's another vehicle just joined to watch the same cat. And of course, when we were working around here, I'd just taken the road to drive, but then I was moving the branches out of the road 
this elephant's been pushed on a lot of her branches, blocked the road. But then it happened, just had a call of her. And then I said to Neil, let's get around it. Just drive the road, we came in. This is how we found her. She just met us down to this water hole. Beautiful looks to me. She's actually full belly anyway. But for her, it looks like this has happened um, last week where she, uh, I saw her, you know, doing this kind of co contact calling, kind of uh, probably advertising Toro Tree, I believe. Now she's up and move again, you can see it. Oh, beautiful. She's, so she's still contact calling again. So um, it's a very busy sighting, everyone. So uh, I'm going to, you know, move out of the sighting right now. But once there's a gap, I'll come back to you guys. So I'm just going to make space for everyone everyone to come into this sighting to, to have a look at this animal it's been really cool to able to find a spotted cat on the move Leopards are so interesting and very nice to watch, especially during a time like this when they're on the prowl hunting. Our lions have positioned themselves. They were all scattered. A little while ago, they were all cuddling because it was getting cold. And as soon as the zebras came by, when well, the stallions were barking there, these lions got up. So they're all alert. One of the leading lioness has gone to pursue the, the zebras. So as you wait here, we can see how lions, when they want to hunt, how they strategically position themselves. So imagine that is the lead lioness or lion. They will walk towards prey to flush the prey towards these other waiting lions. Sometimes, even though we see them in a big number, they fail their hunts. It's reckoned that out of five attempts, one or two can be successful. The life of lions is very, very tough. Being an apex predator, you have to bring prey that can be able to feed you. So lions prefer larger prey. For example, buffaloes, wildebeest, and zebra. If it's a small prey, like a Thompson gazelle or impala, some of these lions might end up hungry, just nibbling on the bone, because the big male lion dominant in these prides are the ones that come at a kill fast. That one looks a little bit sleepy. It looks so sleepy. As I wait to see what these lions will do, I'm gonna send you over to another safari vehicle. So we added where Hina actually stole part of this um, impala and then these wild dogs started chasing the Hina and eventually they got it back. Um, but I think it won't be too long before the rest of the pack is going to come and join us again. So it was so funny to watch because the whole pack basically went down onto the single hyena and as it was trying to run away it was they were just biting him on his hind quarters until eventually he gave up the carcass and started running off. But this was just such an incredible sighting to watch now. See the one just picked up the leg and started running off. I personally have never seen that before. 
Um, to be honest, I don't even know if it's ever been recorded. So I'd love to know. I mean, any of our viewers, if you can um, please drop a comment about it. I would love to hear. Um, but I personally have never seen one or even heard about one. But I'm sure it could be possible um, that, you, that it could occur. I just never seen it. I've seen wild dogs, though, that are very pale in color. Um, and I've seen those that are dark in color. But it's, um, it's just, as you can see with that one as well, um, it's a lot darker than some of the others that have more brown and more white, but definitely not leucistic or melanistic. Another one just ran right in front of us. Tell me they would. They basically everything that they can that they can eat, they'll eat. Um, even with the skin, they'll. They'll chew as much as they can. If it's too hard with some of the animals, they might leave it. But if they can, as long as they can, they'll try and tear it apart into small chunks and then eat that. I just love seeing this interaction amongst them. Look at how immediately how they have this tug of war to try and rip the pieces off. There's our hina moving closer. This hina is right next to us now. Let's see how these wild dogs are going to interact, especially with the hina. Early on, they didn't tolerate it, and they actually started chasing the hina. Now, let's see. This is going to be an interesting interaction. Oh, he's moved around. So, let's see. He's trying to steal something. Here we go. I think that Ahina managed to get that steal. How incredible was that? Like, I, as I looked at the camera and turned back, I just saw this Ahina coming flying towards us with that, um, I think it was probably just the bone of that uh, impala in his mouth. But let's try and see if we can get a view of where that Ahina moved off. That's incredible. There's actually a wild dog coming up this side. So we'll just stop here to point out. There he goes. I think that Ahina might have successfully still stolen that carcass. There's another one from approaching from the left as well. So what I might just do is um, I'd love to maybe see if we can reposition the vehicle up this side and see if there's any other signs of uh, possibly that hyena and uh, see if it managed to steal that kill or if the wild dogs managed to get it back. But I can definitely see a few vultures also coming in, so I'm sure they must be this way. It's always nice when you watch wild dogs and vultures interact, especially when the vultures are devouring a carcass. Now our lions have decided to go on a move. This is a young teenage male lion. Look at the men, they've already started developing. So this will one day be a prime leader in a pride. Quite shy as, let me just position for you. He's following the sisters and the rest of the pride that has moved over following the zebras. He's still scanning, watching over this territory. 
And as he walks away to join the sisters, I'm going to send you to another safari vehicle. We are here in the Mulwati. After doing an extensive search for the leopard that I thought was in the drainage. And can you spot our broody Mrs. Eagle Owl? There she is. Isn't she just gorgeous? Whenever I see her here on this bank sitting. Sorry, Byron from Nsingi here. How many vehicles on Juba? It looks so peaceful. She looks like such a happy mum. Just waiting for the arrival of the little Sebwig number two. Doesn't she just look wonderful? Amazing to be able to keep tabs on them like this. The pair of spotted eagle owls. The male usually is in a tree not too far away. And she'll be sitting like this as soon as the first egg is laid. I wonder how many she has under there. Of course, we can expect a little one in about a month. So she start, will start sitting like this as soon as the first egg is laid. And there's about a, about one to four days between the laying of eggs. And she can lay anything from about one to six eggs. They've even been known to lay a replacement clutch if one is lost. So a lot of investment. biological or molecular investment in the production of these eggs and especially if they lose a clutch and then they lay more eggs to replace them so much investment energy investment and then as well as parental investment I think I hear some elephants close by as well isn't that nice? I want to leave her be so she can be at peace and just, I was about to say, just lay there. And it is correct. Or lie there laying. Monique, you say the sighting makes me smile. It makes me smile as well. It really does. So, so peaceful. There's new life. right there just waiting to come out into the big bright world also guys the lovely Paul is on camera with me at the moment and will be for the rest of the drive and I think he's doing a fantastic job well we're going to move off and leave her be go find these elephants in the Malwati The one pup right in the middle, one of the adults who regurgitated a piece of meat. And um, of course, he had to try and get away from the siblings because they all wanted um, a little bite. There's another one just left of that that also um, was able to get like a little piece. So now all of them are heading down to go and investigate. You can actually hear some hyenas. Now, the thing is, these wild dogs have constantly chased these hyenas now. And there's another hyena that's on its way. So we'll see. Because as soon as they get too close to the pups, all the adults get up and they start chasing these hyenas. I can hear the hyena behind me. Look at how these... You all even see the pups have lifted up at their heads and they're staring back towards us now. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to ask just to have a look here. So where I am now, there's two hyenas just directly behind me here. So that's 
This one is calling. There's actually more and more hyenas coming to join up. So I would like us to focus back onto the wild dogs to see what they might be up to. So I just want to respond. There's another ranger joining. Yeah, Trico, you can make your way in. So see these wild dogs. There's another a few hyenas that have joined up. And the wild dogs are now deciding they don't like these hyenas too much. There they're chasing. It looks like they might just chase one this side. Let me just duck out of the way so everyone can have a look. You can just those, uh, hear those hyenas as those wild dogs are pinching them. They're not pinching, they're actually trying to just bite them on their hindquarters and their back legs. There's another wild dog that just chased the vulture now as well. So you'll see the vulture actually coming just over us. So you'll probably be able to hear that hyena call, like up to maybe three, four kilometers, depending on how crisp the air is, depending on the time of day. <coughs> Excuse me. But early on the morning, I've heard it before, where hyena was probably five kilometers away, but as it was hooping, um, the sound was traveling along the river uh, bed, and we could hear it for so far. And just looking now, there's another hyena in the open clearing at the back of where these wild dogs are, but just on the outskirts. Because the thing is, as soon as they get too close for these wild dogs' comfort, they'll start getting up and start chasing those hyenas. But it can be, though, that whoop sound can be heard from quite a distance. Looks like this one actually got the jaw of that impala. Well, that must be very interesting to see uh, two of the top uh, predators having an altercation. And I've got a female elephant here. And this cow, first let's listen to how she's uprooting the grass from the ground. She got some of the longest tuskers I've seen for a female in the recent past here in the Mara Triangle. But look at the length of those tusks. The right one looks straight down and the left one down and curves a little bit upwards. So it could be very easy to ID uh, this particular cow and I think me and Bunge on camera have become very good in naming some of these. Elisa, she's having a pool break there. 
But this would be very difficult for us to name, to name her because at least we have marked her by the look of her face and more so the tasks. We'll be working out on a way we can name her like Jasiri and just give you a feedback on Jasiri. Uh, I spoke to the vet doctor who said Jasiri is up and about and she's still with a new adopted family, which is very good news for all of us and more so for myself. <coughs> In the background there, we've got a few, I would say some youngsters having some fun. I'm not sure why they're pushing each other. It's a bit of push and shovel. I could only guess they could be young bulls. I could be wrong. But with that kind of behavior, so we'll see young males. Lego, you ask King why elephant bulls will travel alone sometimes. You'll notice, Lego, the females tend to be more comfortable without the bulls, and they may only need the bulls when the one or two, three cows are in estrus, only for mating. And if the bull would have come from the lineage of a particular herd, they'll make sure, or the matriarch or the females will make sure he does not stay with them. It's very normal uh, to see male, uh, you know, elephants on their own very many times. Once in a while, you get two or three feeding, but for all the cows, the cows will be living together sisters, first cousins, and their calves. In one small herd, anything from three, sometimes up to 50 together. I'm imagining this, how young bulls start going for each other. And maybe when fully grown, and they'll have a real fight, it would happen when they go for dominance or for breeding rights. It's two and two there. Just looking at it as more of a play fight than an actual uh, fighting. It would be a real fight if it gets really big, big bull pushing a small one. And maybe when the youngsters or when the young bulls get to puberty stage and they want to start mating with the cows, the dominant bulls will definitely not take any of that. Careful, don't hurt each other. Sometimes we hear those tuskers just knocking from where we are. And we've got some watered lapwing just going choo choo choo. It's time getting to dusk, time to go to safe places to stay for the night. I'll continue enjoying those calls for the lapwings that could be going uh, out to bed themselves for a couple of minutes as we take you to another colleague of mine. So it was uh, another scene where these like pups were playing with that. Um, it looked like it might be the lower jawbone of the impala and then suddenly the hyenas came in to try and steal it and these adults did not like that the hyenas are now downwind from where these wild dogs are so if we give it some time i'm actually seeing the hyenas moving in there might be a good chance that these um, wild dogs are going to go for those hyenas again because they're getting way too close and i think those hyenas can definitely see the pups have something that they are playing with and they're trying to get to it someone's waiting these hyenas are waiting for the other ones to get closer before they try and make their way closer towards the pack Look at them, just waiting, looking at the other ones.
we just want to try and see, I mean, there's a good chance that the hyenas um, from our right could be approaching as well. But they've been scattered all over. It's just been hilarious to watch because often the wild dogs, especially, especially around the carcass, they're so vulnerable with the hyenas. But because there's so many wild dogs, they actually manage to stand their ground and chase these hyenas away. Those are all the youngsters that are now grouped together. Let's see, there's another hyena in the road, just down from where these wild dogs are. Now it is carefully approaching, because it knows if it gets too close, then the wild dogs are probably going to chase it. But also with that hyena calling earlier on, there's a good chance that there will be more and more hyenas that eventually get here. And when once that happens, these wild dogs will probably have to then start moving off. Like the pups might have gotten that other lower jawbone. But I think for now, because it is starting to get darker, we'll probably leave these wild dogs and hyenas. But what an incredible afternoon to spend some time with them. Say there. I didn't get that at all. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sure we'll get Swalu back. We're here at Treehouse Dam watching a lovely bachelor herd of Impala. They came down to have a bit of a drink. Continuing on through the bush to think about what the night has to offer them. Where is a good place for them to stop and rest? The leaders of this line of male impalas or rams have stopped and are looking at something. But at this time, with the wind, the low light, they need to be particularly cautious. Oh, one more coming down for a drink. Oh, just lovely. They still have enough light for a bit of a reflection. Amanda, you'd like to know what the difference is between horns and antlers. Horns are permanent structures on an animal. So they grow and they are permanently on the animal. Antlers are seasonal. So they'll grow and then after the breeding season, they'll drop off. They also generally don't have a keratin, keratin sheath like horns do. Some of them have a velvet-like co coating, not the horns, the antlers. But the most significant difference is that the horns are permanent bony structures that are on the animal for life. When they're born, they have buds little buds on their head and from that the horns start to grow. Now antlers can also be bony and they can also grow from the bud but they are seasonal. They do not they're not vascularized in the same way. 
So once the body has taken signals and cues from the environment, such as shorter days, longer nights and things like that, that can promote testosterone um, release in an animal, which could signify that it is breeding season, then those antlers start to grow. And once that, the day lengths get longer again, the body takes a cue from that and starts to stop getting nutrients to those antlers, and then they fall off. Very, very nice. Well, I'm going to move on from these guys and let them settle in for the night. Alrighty guys, so we finally have a little bit of action on the lion front over here. And as I say that she lays down, good girl. Um, so we just had a, a couple of eland coming over the dune, which definitely caught the eye of that particular female. I don't think they are strong enough or even experienced enough to go for Cape eland yet, uh, because he was, these were all adult females. However, the intention is there. So there might be a couple of Oryx or Gemsbok or um, Red Heart to be or something like that coming through a little later on. And I think they'll definitely be a bit more interested in that. Also, I mean, they do hunt best when it is dark. So they might just be waiting for darkness to come for them to start really operating. But yeah, it will. It's actually just nice to see them waking up and and looking a little bit more lion-like and less log-like. Very, very young female that one, guys. I'm. If I had to say, probably, if she's close to two years, she's maybe about twenty months old. The two boys are a little older. Um, which is going to make life difficult for them as far as hunting is concerned. I mean, she's she's not even three quarters of the size of an adult female lion yet, so a lioness yet. So, lacking a lot of power and speed still, as well as experience. But this is how little lions grow up. This is how they are learning every day the ones that don't learn fast enough unfortunately is going to have a tough life so yeah very very cool to see them waking up like this you can see that one on the right hand side is also now starting to engage in So Sarah just had a question, how long can lions go without water? Sarah, it's, it's far shorter than what they can go without food. So food typically, or eating, um, typically they they don't, they shouldn't go for more than two weeks. Let's say they, ideally, they don't want to go without eating for a day. Um, however, water is much more important. So <clears throat> with that being the case, um, they would want to drink water at least once a day. Um, jackals are just starting to call. That's why you can see all of the ears being up. Uh, without drinking water, a lion would probably last about, I want to say a week to 10 days, but then it's going to be critical. Out here, even shorter maybe, especially during summertime, um, with us getting the very dry, very warm weather. Uh, so summertime, I mean, even even at night time you'll have 29 30 degrees celsius evenings uh, so that's even going to that's also going to dehydrate them um so i want to say about five days five days maybe six if they if it's a strong lion that they can go without water but it's definitely not ideal um they would want to drink water if not twice at least once a day And you can see the ears are far more up now, now that the jackals have also called. Beautiful sound, that jackal call. So Trevor had a question just now, how big is this pride? So Trev, 
<clears throat> this particular, oh, that's charming. Um, this particular group at the moment is only the three. It's um, the previous cubs of the Southern Pride that got kicked out. So before they got kicked out, the Pr Southern Pride was nine individuals, which comprised of three adult females and then three females that slightly younger, maybe these ones previous siblings or cubs. And then we had this litter, which was the second last litter of cubs that we had in the Southern Pride. So they were nine. Three of them got kicked out now and three got added. So that Pride still at nine. This newly formed group of lions, because you can't really call it a Pride or a coalition yet, <clears throat> is only the three. Uh, the the Southern Pride, however, we don't know. So there's two females that has has had cubs. One hasn't shown us the the cubs yet, so we don't know how many was in the litter. Um, and the second or the first female to give birth also had three cubs. So existing Pride members at the moment, around eight. Um, but when when the f other female introduces and rejoins the the southern pride again then we can say okay now they're 12 or something like that so we have something quite special i think this is our single brave lioness that we know as Lagatha. I'm not sure, it's very far and it's quite dark. But we just thought we'd come to the dam, just in case she came back. Remember, she chased the elephants earlier, or rather, the elephants moved away from her. And we were about to look at these buffalo weavers, and all of a sudden, she just came over the crest of the dam wall and started to come down to drink, which is absolutely spectacular. She is so thirsty. Look at how big her belly is. So you can see there's nothing else at the water hole right now. That's why she's taking this opportunity before it gets very dark, before other animals like uh, bigger lions or maybe a clan of hyenas start moving around just to drink and then maybe scurry back to whatever carcass she's got. I think she's got a carcass. We didn't see this lion too long ago and she did not have a very big belly like this. So I don't think she's pregnant. This is one of the theories we were coming up with or why she looks just so fat. But no, she's almost certainly been eating something all to herself which is great to see because of course she's not part of a pride or at least not at the moment and hasn't been for quite some time so if this is Lagatha that means she's doing extremely well as a single lioness hunting catching prey feeding and avoiding conflict with larger more powerful predators I'm so happy to see her uh, coming down to Indlovu Dam right here by our camp. We've been watching her twice today. She's come down to the water to drink once in the heat of the day, once right just before our afternoon drive, and now again just at sunset. She's becoming quite a fixture. We do have to be wary because if she does come into the camp this evening, there's a few dikers walking around which she can almost certainly see, although she is very big, very heavy, so she's probably not going to be doing much hunting right now but it's been a spectacular afternoon i think everyone's had such a great time so i think this is the perfect way to end this evening wild dogs lions hyenas all sorts of crazy stuff happening and now our brave lioness coming down here at pride lens to drink well hopefully you've all enjoyed this afternoon's live safari and please join us again tomorrow morning for more action right here live from the bush. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs>